It is a hot summer day. A drill rig taps deep beneath the Nevada desert in one of the nation's largest restricted areas. These drillers are on a mission. The focus of their mission is groundwater. Drilling is just one piece of a larger scientific quest to better understand the complex groundwater systems at the Nevada National Security Site. So now the question is, why? Between 1951 and 1992, the United States government performed more than 800 underground nuclear tests at the site. About one-third of these tests occurred near or below the water table, which resulted in some radioactive contamination of the groundwater. To better understand the behavior of contaminants in groundwater and protect communities around the site, the U.S. Department of Energy embarked on an ambitious groundwater program. Scientists from the Nevada site office began looking at what was already known about the contaminants at the site. They know, for instance, where underground tests occurred, at what depth they occurred, the location and size of the test cavities, and the sources of contamination. The next objective was to explore the unknowns, like whether or not contaminants have traveled in groundwater, and if so, how far, how fast, and along what pathways. A strategy was developed to integrate the knowns with the unknowns, and the approach had to take into account several major challenges. For instance, the complex geology of the site. One of the key things that we have to understand at the Nevada National Security Site is the complex geology that does exist on the site. Some of that complexity comes in with the type of rocks and also the structure of those rocks. It includes volcanic rocks, it includes carbonate rocks, and it includes alluvial rocks. Once we understand that, we can understand better how the water flows through those rocks and how contaminants are moving through that water flow as well. Scientists must also deal with a wide variability in groundwater depth, which can range from hundreds of feet to several thousand feet below the surface. Next, scientists had to consider the massive size of the Nevada National Security Site. Its 1,360 square miles of terrain spans three separate desert regions and represents different altitudes, climates, and geologic conditions. But the main parameter scientists face was the fact that no feasible technology exists for removing extensive contamination from groundwater. After analyzing these challenges and exploring the scientific community for options, an approach was selected that focuses on developing an advanced, reliable monitoring network that identifies where water is safe and unsafe for use. The ultimate goal is the long-term protection of the public and the environment. The strategy called for drilling new wells, sampling new and existing wells, and then analyzing the results. All of these components would then come together to develop computer images of the subsurface, known as computer models. Now let's talk about how drilling, sampling, and data collection work together to help generate these computer models. Since 1989, dozens of what are called groundwater characterization wells have been drilled throughout the Nevada National Security Site. The term characterization means testing well samples to determine groundwater chemistry, pressure levels, temperature, as well as gauge the surrounding geology. Samples are sent to Nevada-certified independent laboratories for analysis, and then individual results become data points in a highly sophisticated computer database. When experts gather enough data points from sampling and other geologic tests, the database can start building a model. So why is generating computer models such an integral part of the strategy? A computer model, in our case, is a representation of the subsurface geology, um, only we're doing it in a computer and not, you know, with a with the actual physical tools. And then once we have that that model of the physical world, then we put it on top of that 
uh, mathematical models of how groundwater flows through that environment. So it, it's really uh, literally a, a model or a simulation of what's underneath our feet. We utilize those models so we can get a better understanding of rock water interactions and make key decisions for putting in monitoring wells or developing our models even further if that's necessary, all in the, in the intent to protect the public from groundwater movement and contaminants that might be moving in that groundwater. Workers periodically return to the field to resample existing wells or drill new wells to see if sampling results are consistent with the model assumptions. This is called model evaluation. When scientists are confident in the model's performance, the process of designing a monitoring network begins. As we've shown, the strategy involves many stages over several years of data gathering and data interpretation. So where are we in this process? In 1989, when the strategy was launched, specialists started developing a regional evaluation. During this stage, experts looked at the Nevada National Security Site and surrounding areas on a large scale. From this, experts produced the regional model, which is a computer-generated image showing groundwater flow and potential contaminant pathways both inside and beyond the boundaries of the site. Using information from the regional model, scientists then began developing smaller scale models known as flow and transport models. These models provide important details on how groundwater flows relative to the former underground test areas. The completion of the flow and transport models for each of the areas will initiate the design of the monitoring network. The Nevada Site Office has maintained an open-minded approach over the years, often seeking the input of industry experts as well as interested community members. In 1999, an independent peer review panel was conducted at the request of the Nevada Site-Specific Advisory Board, which is a volunteer citizens group that regularly provides recommendations on Nevada National Security Site cleanup activities. During these peer reviews, an independent panel of geologists, hydrologists, geochemists, and engineers explored the overall groundwater strategy and concluded that scientists needed to increase data collection to enhance the accuracy of model forecasts. In response, adjustments were made both in the field and in modeling activities. The panel also called for future independent reviews of model findings. And in 2010, a peer review of the Frenchman Flat flow and transport model found the results to be highly sophisticated and recommended the process move forward to the model evaluation and monitoring phases. To encourage an open dialogue with the public, the Nevada Site Office invites community members to attend periodic open house events in rural Nevada, during which experts conduct one-on-one -on -one question and answer sessions on everything from modeling results to the basics of radiation. With the help of the best minds in the industry and the most complete information available, the Nevada Site Office is getting closer to developing a solid, long-term groundwater monitoring network. In the meantime, specialists will continue exploring data from over 90 wells that are part of the groundwater program. The Nevada Site Office will continue routinely monitoring 60 additional locations, which include wells, springs, and surface water sites on and near the Nevada National Security Site. As always, the goal is the continued protection of the public. The slow movement of contaminants and scientists' ability to identify contamination at extremely low levels are distinct advantages. The site's remoteness, size, and restricted nature also serve as protective mechanisms. As we've seen, the wonders of today's state-of-the-art computer modeling tools are coming into play more than ever, helping experts position wells more efficiently, aiding in the process of data interpretation, giving us never-before-seen glimpses into the hidden world
that lies beneath the Nevada National Security Site.